You're listening to Tori Writers She Said What podcast. I'm Tori along with Marcy Persky. In this installment, why is a Gila monster like your ex boyfriend? Also, Cheerios and hamburger as warfare countermeasures. This really has nothing to do with, like, what's going on. Uh Well, it's what's going on inside of my brain. Oh, that's my favorite. I read an article this morning about a man in Colorado who was bit by his pet Gila monster. Gila. With Gila, Gila, whatever it is. Gila, Gila. is for Jewish weddings. That's Havana okay. Gila. Gila. <laughs> Gila. <laughs> whatever. It bit this guy, and it was his pet. It was a baby. And he died. The and Gila monster died, know, or the pet, or the guy with the pet. The died? dude died. Huh? He had a grown-up one and a baby one, and the baby bit him, and he died. So I want to know why do people have pets that could kill them? Why would you have a poisonous lizard living in your bathtub or wherever? Or people who keep poisonous snakes? Like, here's my. Snake Spot. He's a King Cobra. He's Black Mamba. He's whatever. I don't understand. I I have a theory. I want to hear it. It it is the same reason that uh, women in particular date alcoholics, drug addicts, and criminals. Okay. The exact same reason. And actually, they'd probably be better off with a Gila monster. It is what I call... Lion tamer syndrome. It's this thing is dangerous to everybody but me. I can tame him. I can handle him. I am the exception. Everybody else, the guy is a criminal or or a, a raging drunk, messed up jerk. But but for me, for me, I can handle him. I can manage him. And that's the same thing. That's what you're looking at there. But, that's but my you theory. Can die. Yeah, you could die with one of those drunk drop of venom. You can die from one of those drunken drug addicted guys. And I'll tell you how I know this is true. I'll tell you it's from yeah. my own personal experience. <laughs> Don't tell me you you've adopted a Gila monster. No, I lived. I dated for almost four years a, a very talented, very brilliant, very just gifted and and sort of successful air personality. I mean, he would be successful. He would get these fantastic jobs, and then he was a raging drunken cocaine addict, and so he would lose the job or mess up the job or be sent to rehab. So he was definitely one of those five steps forward, ten steps back kind of guys. This is where I developed my theory of lion tamer syndrome. I worked at, at the radio station opposite his and people would call me to handle him. And I felt so special and proud and honored that I was in charge, which, of course, I was not. And I realized that just like picking up a Gila monster where one drop of venom could could kill me, one day, in order to make sure that he got to work safely, I found myself on the back of a Harley Davidson going 60 miles an hour in a 40-mile-an-hour zone and the smell of Seagram's blowing back into my face, at which point I thought, you know what? This is a bad idea. But the Gila monsters aren't even cute. Well, I mean, he... if we're talking about guy, okay. So... <laughs> I don't know that he was cute now that you mention it. There had to have been something. Yeah. The same but a thing... lot of women get involved with these guys not knowing. Okay, you find out later. You know what? I don't believe garbage. that. I don't believe that. I Gila think it... monster. You take a Gila monster into your house, and you know that if you pick it up and give it hugs and kisses, it will bite you. Same with don't an alcoholic. Same. Same with an alcoholic <laughs> drug addict. You absolutely know <laughs> that at the very least it will destroy your bank account, and probably you along with it. This is not... This is not an inaccurate theory. (laughs) People think this podcast is all light and fluffy, but A, we've had a poisoning already, and it's only a couple minutes into it. And B, I've just explained the whole codependent theory in a form that I think should be palatable and understandable to anyone. It's it's one step. We'll call it the one step theory. Just don't do it. Yeah. Both with the Gila monster and both with the bad guy. Yeah. 
enough with the Gila monster, enough with the bad guy. That's right. If nothing else, this is our first therapeutic <laughs> podcast. I <laughs> our public service <laughs> public. to people with Gila monsters in their bathtubs and, and or bad guys on their doorsteps. Right. Right. I think you've mentioned on the podcast that uh, you've had some relationships that were less than successful. I think, I think that's... Haven't we all? Yes. But I, I, I think that if you thought about it, you would realize, and you have realized, and I know you know, that you had a pretty good idea of some of this when you walked you're, into it, right? You're talking about the dead guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one way of referring to him. You yeah. you want to elaborate on that so that people no. don't think you killed him yourself? No elaboration needed. Okay. He's, well, would you like? He's me, just known around here as dead guy. Would you like me that's to all. gently, gently explain to people who might think you killed him yourself? I, actually, I didn't. He was in a different state. Well, so. right, but. Still, I just want to clarify. And I hadn't seen him for a while. Of course. Actually, this was a guy I married because he needed a root canal, and I had insurance. <laughs> and I would just like to, since since we're doing a whole public service broadcast <laughs> today, I would like to put out there, that is not a reason to marry someone. Good. 11 years later, he was still threatening to kill all of us and set the house on fire if I kicked him out or tried to divorce him. And it was 11 years of him and us. You know, I lived there with my kids. We lived our lives. He wasn't really part of it, except for taking my money, stealing my car, um, <laughs> opening up accounts in one of my kids' names all over the place. <laughs> but he's dead now, so, yeah. There was a brief <laughs> shining moment where you actually said the, the fateful words, but but I love him. You don't recall? Oh, this? I did. You... I did for a minute. But yeah, I just said a shining <laughs> moment. I didn't want to yeah. drag it out any longer than it needed to be dragged. But... Yes, I did for a minute. I did say that for a minute. Okay, just it did not last for the record because I and I didn't kill him. I'm confessing. I spent four years. Four years. This is how effed up it was. And I um, I've talked about some of this in the book, but this story I don't think I put in the book. I moved to California from Chicago, and this guy was in a halfway house because he'd been through rehab one more time, yeah. and uh, and I think he was seeing somebody else at this point, and we were done. But I was so screwed up. This is how screwed up I was. I am looking at houses to buy in San Francisco because the rent was insane, and there was one really lovely little house and like many houses in the Bay area, it was up a hill and it was up something like 77 steps. And I just thought if I buy this house, so-and-so is going to pass out at the bottom of the stairs and I'll find him in the morning. <laughs> and then I and... thought, that's the stupid, you haven't seen him in months. You've broken up with him, but the, but the lion tamer syndrome, you know, Yep. This is what happens. It's very well, difficult. I had the root canal syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> and the chorus all together now. But we love them. Yeah. Hallelujah. We love them. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Oh. I mean, it's so easy in hindsight to see what they were like. Um, okay. So I have one more thing to tell you. Okay. This is it. really weird. Okay. Now, this is like eerie weird okay okay like ooh. okay yesterday the dude which is the smallest of my two goats kevin and the dude and they're both neither one of them small at this point they're both pretty good sized goats yeah i turn around and he's standing in the house again yes he came somehow he smushed himself through the dog door and i don't know it it doesn't it it doesn't compute. If you look at the dog door and you look at at um, the dude, I could not figure out how he got in. And he's running around my house. But I got him out with Cheerios. I grabbed a box of Cheerios and shook it around. And he's like, mmm, because after all, he's a goat. And I got him out with the sliding door. And then I come back into my house and 
I locked the sliding door, by the way, because Kevin, the other goat, knows how to open the slider. Hmm. My uh, Facebook was bing, 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 bing while I was looking at it. And it said, today, one year ago, and here's a picture of this goat standing in my living room pooping on the exact same day. Wow. And yes. furthermore, mm-hmm. if you need a furthermore, mm-hmm. my yard is full of cows. Again? Which was also the exact same time. Yes. So, yeah, my, my life, part of my life at least is in a weird loop. It would be a know. groundhog day, except it's like a ground goat day. But yes, the dude got in on the exact same day that he got in last year, and we changed the size of the dog door to make it smaller, and he still got in. I think that the the cure for this is hamburgers tonight. Yeah, <laughs> heroes. Yeah, I think. No, I, think... I don't eat goat burgers. Well, but no, yeah. these cows are like the biggest cows I've ever seen in my life, and I'm a farm girl. These are huge cows with. Huge male parts and horns. Male? So they're not cows. No, they're bulls. Oh, now you tell me. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're boys. But there's a little one with them. Like somebody's teaching his son the way of the bull world. I don't know. But there's one. (laughs) There's one calf. And I'm laughing, but it's really not funny because they just rip up our yard. Are they dangerous? No, they're no. They're bovines. Well, I grew well, up in Kansas across from the bull barn at Can- of Kansas State University's artificial insemination project, which yeah, when I asked for a definition, it gave my mother a little miniature heart attack. When I asked her to define artificial insemination um, in second grade, I think, I think that was asking a lot. Now that I'm yeah. a mother, I realize. But... Uh, the bulls, you know those round clotheslines that people have. They're not like yeah. a string. They're they're like a little miniature merry-go-round with yeah, like lines. pony rides. Yeah, exactly. Uh, they had the bulls outside with their nose rings, and then attached to the, one of these circular things, so that I don't know, it was some kind of all for one and one for all. They could only walk around an exercise if they all decided to move in a circle otherwise but they're captives which would make them a little bit angry i just was warned severely against sitting on the fence well i'm not going outside and like shaking a red towel at them i went over behind them and i yelled scram and and yeah looked at me and just kept on eating the bark off oh, the tree boy. but no they don't attack but they they do look threatening because they're just big and all the parts those, of them, the parts of them are big. This is a free range state. I know. You've explained they can go yeah. anywhere they want except inside your house. And um, unfortunately, it's not free range hamburger steak. What you need is a BB gun. Well, I have a bulldog. But good luck. All that means is that we can't let her outside. Right. Because she'll go. She'll chase them. Yeah, and then she'll get kicked in the head, and that'll be another $20,000 worth of vet bills. And we saw a guy last week at the vet whose dog got kicked by a bull. Oi. Okay, so that's me. BB gun. What's up with you? No, I'll tell you later. I think I'm completely satisfied. I have to to think about everything that you just said. (laughs) And uh, Poison pets, marauding goats and cows. (laughs) And we also led people from their toxic men and pets yes their gila relationships we've healed them from their gila relationships <laughs> don't date lizards yeah. don't date lizards <laughs> there you go thanks for listening to the Tory writers she said what podcast since you've made it to the end you might want to know that my book she said what a life on the air is not only available in print but now also in complete audiobook form narrated by me and available on audible 